Cool. So you should see the slides, right? I can see them. Hopefully everybody else can see them as well. Yes. If you can see them, <laughs> everyone else can see them. All right. So we'll get going <laughs> then. Thank you, everybody, for uh, coming and joining us for our uh, June webinar. Uh, we actually uh, sent out a survey to our email list uh, asking, you know, what some of the biggest challenges were that you were facing in your law firm. And this was uh, the overwhelming winner. And so, um, you know, in an effort to just continue to be a resource for, you know, solo and small law firms out there uh, this month, we are talking about time management uh, for attorneys. And so, you know, we'll talk about, um, you know, we are a marketing company. We're going to talk about ways to, you know, make some efficient, uh, you know, make some more efficient strategies with your marketing. But we'll also give you some general time management tips as well, uh, you know, and hopefully, you know, challenge you to make a couple of changes there and, and kind of gain back some of that time and you just so you don't feel so stressed and overwhelmed and all of that. Um, if you can see us, we are back in the office, although we're still social distancing, um, you know, so slowly getting back to normal. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know where else to go with that. So let's uh, let's jump in. Um, if you've been with us before, uh, you know who we are. I am uh, John Henson. I'm the marketing manager here at Spotlight Branding. Um, I also handle a lot of the other administrative stuff um, in the back end. Um, and then I also have Jana here. Jana, say hi to all of the lovely people. Hi, people. I'm the, the one with the hair of those two in the picture. <laughs> um, yes. yes, nice to see you all again for those returning. And it's nice to virtually meet our new new joinees. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Cool. And so, um, yeah, like last month, we do have some sponsors um, just to show you that these webinars are a big deal and we are uh, legit. Uh, Jana, tell them about our lovely sponsors. I would love to. Um, so first up, we have Get Staffed Up, and they are one of the best like virtual staffing companies um, that are, that's out there. And so we've used them even at Spotlight Branding to fill some roles, and the talent that they recruit is just really high quality. So if you need someone around the office to help out, but you're worried that you can't quite afford that and like bring on a staff member, get stepped up and um, they can provide this like incredible offshore talent that will help you eliminate risk, but also provide that like, um, you know, like help that you need that'll increase your margin so you can actually focus on the, the legal side of it. Um, you can go to getstaffedup.com to learn more. Um, and I'll be posting all the different like links and stuff here in the little Q&A thing. So you guys can just click um, to go there. Um, next up, we have Smith.ai, and they are an industry leader in like chat and receptionist services. So they'll answer calls and chats and texts and Facebook messages, everything 24 7. And they also have like call screening and scheduling and intake and payments. And they'll even call back leads who have like reached out to you through a web form or called, um, like called the firm. And so you can book a consultation with them um, at smith.ai. And if you use the code spotlight, you even get a hundred dollars off of your upfront costs. Um, yeah. Spotlight 100. Oh, I'm sorry. Spotlight 100. You're correct. Okay. Yes. My bad. I'll put that. I'll paste it so that you guys um, have it there. Um, and then lastly, one of our new sponsors, we have Paula Black. Thank you, Paula. Um, she's a business development coach and she works with attorneys um, to help them build this thriving practice and help them do what they love both inside of work, like at the office, but also outside of that. Um, so she recently launched this online coaching program called Thrive that is designed to help lawyers, you know, build a successful solo law, solo law practice um, without having to sacrifice, you know, everything else in your life that you love doing. So um, you can learn about her program and see more of her like inspirational content at paulablack.com. So I'll go ahead and yeah. put all those in the Q&A here and yeah, you guys can awesome. click, click again. Yeah. Yeah, we've actually uh, had Paula come to our office. Uh, she's done a couple of sessions with us, and she's great. So she can she can really help you out, um, you know, and, and just kind of get your firm going uh, in a, in a good direction. Especially if you're feeling burned out, she's all about um, you know inspiring people and and getting you to fall back in uh, in love with uh, the legal world. So. Uh, one more thing uh, before we get started, we have some additional resources that we would love for you guys to check out. Um, 
Again, we have our book, The Ultimate Solo Lawyer's Guide to More Referrals and Better Clients. We are giving copies of this book away for free. Uh, just go to spotlightbranding.com slash guide and fill out the form and we will get you a copy of this book. Um, it's all about, you know, the title kind of says it all, but it, you know, uh, it really just gives you this digital framework for um, building out content that positions you as an expert that really drives those referrals, um, you know, and, and really helps kind of level out those peaks and valleys and cash flow that a lot of solo law firms tend to struggle with. Um, another report, uh, another resource uh, is one of our newer ones. It's our back to business report. Um, and you know, basically this is all about, you know, getting back into the swing of things after this pandemic um, and, you know, some things to focus on with your marketing, but also some uh, administrative things that you may want to consider when running your business overall, some financial tips, um, you know, some uh, hiring HR sort of things to consider. Um, you know, it's all lessons that we learned as a small business uh, going through this. And so uh, there's a lot of good information there that we think is going to be valuable for you all. Uh, and then last one uh, is the our, our Law Firm Marketing Minute podcast. I'm the host of that. So if you enjoy the dulcet tones of my voice uh, today, you will enjoy the Law Firm Marketing Minute. Uh, weekly episodes, uh, they're usually pretty short, um, but just quick hits of marketing inspiration for you um, just to to jump in on your commute to the office. Over 300 episodes at this point. Um, oh, wow. No, just kidding. 200 episodes. Oh. Uh, there, it's number, we're on like number 320, but because of the way they, they're, they're numbered, uh, it's over 200 still. That's plenty for you to, it'll, it'll <laughs> take you a while to get through those. So with that, let's jump into uh, these time management tips. Uh, and we'll start with marketing. Yes, marketing. Yes, let's go ahead and get into all the, the good stuff that you guys are here for. Um, so starting here, um, you know, how to make your marketing more efficient. Um, first up is keeping in touch with your referrals by sending a newsletter. And if I've, you know, talked to you in person, then you have probably heard me talk about the benefits of a newsletter and specifically um, an email version. Printed is honestly great. I think there's a lot of value to that. It is definitely a bit, you know, pricier to do than an email version though. Um, but it's a good way to make sure you're staying in touch with people when you're not able to, you know, get lunch with them um, or go to networking things with them, both for time purposes. And recently, you know, that's been its own hurdle of meeting in person. Um, and even doing phone calls is just, it's very time consuming to reach out to all of those networking professionals that you have met before and also past clients um, just to stay in touch. So the newsletter is a great way to do that in a mass, you know, way, but make sure that you're still giving them that information, reminding them who you are and what you do. Um, so cannot hype up the importance and value of an email newsletter. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and don't, um, yeah. And also to, to add to that, you know, don't, there, there's a lot of misinformation out there about how, you know, email marketing doesn't work or that, you know, people think it's spam. That's it's absolutely not true. Um, our, our email newsletters that we do for our clients are some of the biggest drivers for referrals. I mean, we have testimonials from several clients who say that they get multiple cases every time their newsletter goes out. And so, you know, if you're doing it right, it's a great way to stay in touch with your contacts. Um, you know, in a much more cost-effective way, uh, like Jana said, than taking everybody out to lunch every month. So there is that. Also, before I get into the next couple of points, if anybody has a question um, that they want us to answer, throw it in that Q&A section and uh, we will get to it uh, at the end of the episode or at the end of the webinar. Um, but yeah, so back to this, um, it, uh, along with, you know, keeping in touch with your referrals by sending a newsletter, if you're uh, doing your own social media, um, you know, it can obviously take a lot of time to log into your Facebook, log into your Twitter, then log into your LinkedIn, and then write up the same post. Even if you're a little bit savvier and you copy and paste the same post, which I hope, you know, you're doing, um, you know, it, it can still take up a lot of time to just log into each individual account. Instead, use like the, use a bulk scheduling app like um, Hootsuite or I think Buzzspring, I think is another one. Um, 
you know, a lot of them, they're free apps. You can usually add about three profiles, which is perfect because that's about all you need. Um, you know, if you're going to do Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn and use an app to bulk schedule, not just bulk post one at a time every day, but bulk schedule your social media. You know, if you write, if you have your content that you write up, schedule out a week's worth of social media or schedule for the whole month even. Um, you know, and, and that kind of content, especially if it's evergreen content, you know, if you've heard our webinars before, you sure your blogs should be evergreen, you get some good videos, you know, that answer common questions, that kind of stuff is great social media content that can be reused and recycled over and over and over again to continue hitting different segments of your audience. And so using a bulk scheduling app will, will help you save a lot of time in, in posting a lot of that social media. And the other thing is to make sure that your intake process is automated. So what that looks like is, you know, it kind of starts with a good CRM platform. So, you know, maybe something like Clio or Practice Panther or whatever the case may be. And then making sure that that is integrated with, you know, your website. So it takes, you know, a form submission from your website, automatically adds that person's email address to your newsletter list. It, you know, creates a, you know, a file for them. You have all of their information, whatever the case may be. Hopefully, you know, you, you know, you have some of this in place, but there are a lot of attorneys out there who just do not have this automated intake process set up and it could save you a ton of time. Even if it's not you, maybe it can save your receptionist or your office manager a ton of time to free them up to do some other things that are important for, you know, keeping the firm moving. Um, where are we at? Here we go. Yep. Next slide. <laughs> You can do it. There we go. All right. Um, some things that you should not do. Um, procrastinate, right? There, I, I am, I continue to be amazed at how many people continue to put things off and put things off, even though it has shown time and time again to come around and bite them when they have to panic to meet a deadline and rush through and then they get super stressed out. And so really do make an effort. If you have a bigger task or a bigger project, milestone it out, you know, and hold yourself to deadlines to make progress on things. You know, if, you know, you don't necessarily have to complete a full task at once. You can very easily break it up and just hold yourself accountable and be disciplined enough to just meet those deadlines and, you know, just, you know, keep making progress. Um, Jana, tell them about Google. Don't throw money at it. Just don't. There's, so there's, this is like twofold. So you don't want to throw money at Google in like the SEO way where you're, you know, trying to have all this content written to hit certain keywords so that people will then, you know, find you whenever they're searching on Google. But even the other side of that which is pay-per-click ads. So the Google AdWords where you're competing for this very limited real estate at the top um, in the ad spaces where you're pretty much you know losing from the get-go if you're in a big city and you don't have this huge firm with a giant marketing budget to spend um, you know to adequately get where you need to be for certain keywords that people are searching for. So you if you talk to us or even if you've been to our website for like three seconds you you probably have a good grasp on our thoughts when it comes to seo and you know google advertising um so we think there are a lot of avenues that you know will be less of time wasters first off um because it takes a long time to perfect a google adwords campaign or um you know figure out which keywords you should saturate all your content with but also you're just throwing your money away yeah so i have lots exactly. of thoughts on that <laughs> yeah uh, another thing, and I know this is going to sound pretty ironic coming from a marketing company, but don't put marketing on the back burner. You know, if you feel like you're overwhelmed, th one of the last things that you should, you know, stop paying attention to or cut or anything like that is your marketing. I mean, you know, it's, it's pretty obvious, but, you know, it, and it seems pretty elementary, but it's amazing how many attorneys kind of end up doing this is like whenever they get busy or, um, you know, they have budget issues or whatever the case may be. Marketing is usually the first place to go. And that's a terrible idea because marketing is how you continue that momentum. You know, even if you're, uh, you know, ha even if you have all of the legal work that you can handle, which we get that a lot, marketing is what ensures that you continue to have that because that's how you, you know, prevent these peaks and valleys from coming out, you know, is you have a good steady marketing strategy that keeps things going on an even clip and, and keeps money coming in and you're not freaking out every couple of months 
that you don't have any business coming in. So then you throw a bunch of money and you get stressed out and, and you spend a lot of time on a marketing campaign and the, it's just a bad cycle to get into. And so, um, you know, don't put your marketing on the back burner. And then um, also don't multitask. Don't try to do everything yourself. Um, I am I am one of those people who does multitask a lot, even though I shouldn't. Um, but I often find myself doing that. I do a lot of different things here at the office. Uh, but there are a bunch of studies out there that show that multitasking actually makes you less productive. So um, with that, we've I, I've got some more general tips here um, that you know that that can help you and and i hope that this doesn't you know sound like you know i hope that you're not sitting there going well well duh, obviously don't you know this is what you should do for time management but you know it i hope that this is a good reminder and a good challenge for you guys to really put some of this into practice especially if you find yourself just constantly not having enough hours in the day to get a lot of stuff done and so um you know jana why don't you kind of run through some of these um to start yeah. Um, so the first one there, organizing your task list for the day. Um, I would say that's not even the majority of it. Sticking to it is probably the even bigger and more difficult part of making a list because I'm sure that we've all made a list of things that we need to accomplish for the day, but then we get distracted by other things and, you know, we procrastinate and put stuff off till later. Um, but actually making yourself stick to that list and even organizing it by priority. So put the things that you absolutely know have to be done, all of your meetings on there at the top. And then that way, at least if you don't get all the way through it, you've accomplished the the bulk and the most important parts of it. Um, and have it visible too. Don't just put, don't just make a list and then it ends up at the back of your screen or, you know, and like on the floor. Um, make sure that, you know, you're, you're checking in on it and crossing things off. Um, with that, make sure your workspace is clean. Um, you guys can't really see like our desks, but you know, we, we try to keep pretty, you know, clean desks that are clutter free, um, that have, you know, only the most important things, which are like the computers and of course your coffee. Um, but you know, put it, put your phone away, which kind of goes into eliminating distractions. Um, but when there's too much stuff around, you just find yourself wanting to clean and fidget and play with it and get distracted. Um, so with the distractions, um, put your phone away, put it on do not disturb um, from text if you like have to have it with you. Um, you know, close your door so people can't just come and have little conversations with you. You can pause your email so that you won't get new ones until you start it up again. That's been really helpful for like our team to just pause it for half an hour while you're focusing on a task. Um, time blocking. I am a huge like fan of time blocking. So um, I know that I have certain meetings and calls throughout the day. And so if there's something in particular, like preparing for this webinar that you guys are watching right now, it was on our calendars as something that we blocked out time to kind of go through and prepare for. Um, and so just having it there and again, sticking to that calendar once you have certain things on there is really helpful. Um, if you guys have designated time when you want to, you know, write a blog, when you want to post that social media in bulk, when you want to call some past clients, put it on the calendar. Um, working on one thing at a time, like John said, multitasking can be a bit of a detriment if you're trying to do too many things at once. And I think you said studies have shown it's more efficient to really focus on one thing at a time. Um, and the last one, I know this is a, probably a tough one um, because I'm sure you guys are all very nice people and you want to help out when someone asks a favor of you. But saying no is so important um and you can say it nicely but it, you know if someone asks you to help them out on a project or do something it's so easy to just say sure you know i'll give you a few minutes and then an hour later you're still focusing on that with them and your day has just gone by so learn when to say no i think is important it's a difficult one but important yeah yeah and and a, and a lot of these things you know um kind of time management and stress management go hand in hand. And a lot of these things will do a, a good job of also reducing that stress. You know, I, I've had, you know, times where I'm sitting in the office and I'm trying to crank through a bunch of stuff and people coming in and trying to have conversations with me stresses me out. Um, you know, trying to work on multiple things at a time stresses me out. And so being able to eliminate those distractions, really being disciplined and sticking to one thing at a time, I have found in my own personal experience, absolutely goes a long way towards making me more efficient and also lowering the, the stress that I may feel at any given time. But all these tips are great, but there is one absolute 
big tip <laughs> that um, that will do more for your time management than everything, and that is to delegate. Um, mm -hmm. I know that as an attorney, as a small business owner, that's really difficult for a lot of you to do. But man, I'm telling you the best thing that you are gonna be able to do for your time management really is to delegate, all right? And there's, there's some stat, there's a big stat here. You've probably heard of the 80-20 rule, at least in terms of, you know, running a business and, and the financial side and that, you know, the, the other 80-20 rule is that like 80% of your revenue comes from 20% of your clients. Well, the same 80-20 rule um, kind of works here when it comes to delegating. And that is if someone can do a job 80% as good as you can, you should delegate that task. And I know, you know, I can, pro I can even hear it pinging off some of your heads right now that you want someone to do a job 100% as good as you can. And I totally get that. But as a business owner for your own physical and mental health, 80% is more than good enough to get it done. All right. So keep that in mind. And look, if you're a true solo and you're doing everything on your own, it really is time to delegate some of that, some of those tasks out. You know, so for example, hire a part-time or a full-time assistant. They could be in office or offshore, get staffed up. I didn't even like, this isn't, there, there's going to be some more sponsor plugs here and that wasn't on purpose, but this is just how well we do at getting good sponsors that are relevant <laughs> to the content that we put out. Um, outsource your finances to a bookkeeper, have someone else run your books, reconcile your credit cards, you know, do all of that stuff. There are a bunch of different, you know, small business called consulting companies out there who just have bookkeepers who run the books for a lot of small businesses. Um, get yourself a virtual or outsourced receptionist. You as the attorney, the owner of your law firm should not be answering your phones. All right, you should have a receptionist who does that and does intake for you. So it's maybe someone like Smith AI who has receptionist service. Um, you know what? Since the other two got it, you know what? Give Paula Black a call too. All right, give her mental some health. more love. Yes, she can help with your mental health. Exactly. Thank you. Um, <laughs> but yes. So, but really, like I, you know, I, I'm we're kind of joking around, but seriously, like delegating is the big thing here, and for last but not least, you know, if you're going to hire a part-time or full-time assistant or outsource your finances or hire a virtual receptionist, you should also definitely hire a marketing company. Um, you're not a marketer. They did not teach marketing in law school. Um, you know, if there's anywhere that the 80-20 rule for delegation uh, is going to make you feel the best, it's that a marketing company can absolutely do 100% as good of a job as you can, if not better. All right. And look, not going to lie we can help with the marketing. All right, how smooth was that transition? I'm getting really good at this, all right? <laughs> Don't forget about interns. Hire yourself a bright-eyed, bushy-tailed intern that just yes. is so optimistic. They're in law school, they're, you know, they need some real world experience and they, yeah, just get one of them in the office. They can answer phones for you. They can do some of the, the assistance on those things. Or of course, our wonderful sponsors also could help out with some of those. Yeah. <laughs> But yes, we can we can help you with the marketing. Jana, tell them how we can help with the marketing. Like in all the ways. So we, you guys can read, I don't want to read that verbatim to you. You guys are all competent. But we are, you know, a like company that does specialize in working with solo and small law firms all over the country um, to help, you know, bring in more referrals, better quality clients and, you know, Yes, position them as the expert in their field, but also increase the return on investment of any of the other marketing that you might be doing. So, you know, if you have your intern still, um, you know, have with a good intake process where you're capturing all this contact info and, you know, you're doing those networking things once we're able to network a bit more, um, you know, everything that we do also helps that. You can get a free month of marketing if you book by June 30th. Um, just go to the link there, spotlightbranding.com slash slash schedule. I'll also stick that link in the Q&A. Um, just mention that you saw the webinar because I know this will go out in a recording um, afterwards. So if you you know saw this here, just mention that. Um, you get a free month. Yeah. Awesome. So I'll go put that in the Q&A. Yep. And so that is it. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have some questions, you can throw those over in the Q&A. Uh, 
We do have one, Jillian, uh, asking about more about the automated intake for a small law firm. So yeah, it really, um, like I said, you know, it, hopefully you have uh, some sort of CRM. So like, you know, Clio, uh, Practice Panther, I know those are two of the bigger ones. Um, I know there are several more. I think Infusionsoft um, is, is another big one as well. Um, and basically, you know, have being able to organize a start the starting point is being able to organize um you know your contacts your leads um whatever the case may be um into one place and then a lot all of these programs integrate with everything else that you've got going on and so kind of where you know it becomes more efficient and you you know improve on your time management is instead of manually adding all of these people that come into your office or call or, or whatever, you know, instead of having to manually add them into all of your other, you know, pieces that you've got going on, you know, your CRM can get, um, you know, get the, uh, get the contact information. It automatically communicates with, for example, your constant contact or your MailChimp account adds them to your email newsletter list. Um, and that way, you don't even really have to think about it. Um, you can also set up, you know, various, you know, email drip campaigns. Um, you know, someone leaves, you know, someone fills out a contact form on your website. All of a sudden, instead of you manually sending out, you know, information about your firm or even, uh, you know, booking, booking appointments and everything, I didn't even mention that, um, you know, if you have a, an automatic booking app like Calendly or Bookly or whatever on your website, um, those sorts of things can just, you, you skip the whole, you skip the steps of people calling you, setting up an appointment, blah, 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 blah. It's just all automated. And, and exploring these different, you know, ways of automation, you know, is kind of what we're talking about here in terms of time management. And so, uh, Jillian, I hope that that was a little bit deeper of an answer to your question. Um, I'm happy to talk, you know, further with you about it and kind of answer some more specific questions with you. Uh, if you want to email me at john at spotlightbranding.com. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah. Um, Cynthia, and then Cynthia asking if we can, yes. yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. we're going to send, so yeah. All right, no, sorry. We're, we're well, talking. we're just going to keep talking each over each other. It's <laughs> <We're> fine. <laughs> um, yes, but yes, yeah, we will send it out. <laughs> yes, we're going to send it out. You guys, you guys all yes. get the recording. Yes. Your turn. Cool. Okay. Awesome. Thank Pleasure. you. All right. Great. Jillian, awesome. Look forward to talking with you more about it. And uh, yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, if you have any other questions, um, we'll hang out here for another minute or so. Again, thank you guys so much for uh, registering. Um, if you have any feedback, any future topics that you want us to cover, uh, reach out to us, john at spotlightbranding.com, Jana at spotlightbranding.com. Uh, she typically only wants good feedback. If you have any criticisms, anything we can improve on, I'm happy to read that. Uh, you got it. Exactly. Uh, so. Yeah, that's that. We will be back again next month around this time uh, with another topic. I have not picked it out yet, um, but uh, I so imagine it, it be will back. be. Yeah, yeah, it, it will be something relevant and hopefully uh, <laughs> helpful, and hopefully you will be entertained for at least thirty minutes by it. Um, but yes, so again, thank you all so much. Uh, your continued registrations and attendance keep uh, getting us to to do more of these. Um, Bree, yes, we will be emailing a replay. Um, Jana and I in our horrible continuation of talking <laughs> over each other for a good solid 30 seconds there. Uh, we were trying to uh, say that we would be emailing it out. Um, but yeah, you there can is expect, a downside. Uh, we're not on yeah. video in the recording, sorry. Yeah, you don't get to see us in the recording, but it's OK. Um, but yeah, yeah expect, to, uh, expect to get that recording here in about 15, 20 minutes or so. Uh, I'm usually pretty fast about getting it back out. So. It's because All it right. manages its time well. Yes, I do. I work on one thing at a time. I, I <laughs> practice what I preach for the most part. Um, so thank you all so much. That is going to do it for us. And uh, we will see you next time. <laughs>